Hi guys, welcome back to Stranger Times. Glad you can join me. So today's video is a little bit about USS Nimitz um, with the Tic Tac UFO footage um, and basically where we go from that. What does it mean? So from what you know about aerodynamics, mechanics, physics, uh, should this be possible what you saw? Not with the technology that we have today. Not, not at all. Even now, even 13 years later, is there anything that you know of capable of this kind of behavior? No, there's nothing I know of. I mean, this when you look, when we saw the, the video with the IR, it has no exhaust, uh, it, you know, no, no discernible things of anything, form of propulsion. And this thing came from a dead hover over the water, just kind of moving around to a climb up to about 12,000 feet to rapidly accelerating away in a climb and in less than two seconds it was gone. Good. So bottom line, what do you think this was? I believe, as do the other folks that were on the flight that we, when we visually saw it, that it was something not from this world. Uh, oh. Do you think that the Congress and our leaders should actually take this seriously and try to find an answer? Absolutely, because it puts everybody at risk. It puts our military at risk, it puts our people at risk, our, our homeland at risk. If there are things that just are far superior to us, to our capabilities. This is all of Virginia, by the way. It's the Vacapes. So there's whiskey areas out there, too. That's where NAS Oceana goes out and trains. They've tracked them at, at just sitting there. They've tracked them at high rates of speed. They've been tracked lots. The radars they're using now are even better than the ones that I had uh, in the Super Hornet. It's pretty amazing. More advanced technology, you know, cooler stuff, more capable. They're seeing it. At first, they thought they were, when they first saw it, they thought all oh, these are just ghost hits. And I'm like, no, nah, that radar really doesn't provide ghost hits, which are false targets. It's pretty good. And then someone actually threw their targeting pot out there and there was something there because you can't hide from the targeting pot if you've got any type of heat signature. And that's what really started this. But they've been seen by many people as far as on the radar. And there's been a couple that have seen visual because one guy almost hit one. It was just sitting there. This is recent. This is real recent. This is within the last five years. Did they describe these things as conventional aircraft? How did they describe these things they almost hit, Dave? They describe it as, well, the one that almost got hit was like a a clear beach ball sphere with a cube inside, so the little apex of each corner hit the cube. So I don't know if it's like a, you know, is it a beach ball or is it like a force field? I don't know. There's something around it. Um, they never, they never, this is, this is kind of what's prompting, I think they're getting heat from other avenues of the government because of what happened with our incident that, you know, hindsight being 2020, which is how I live my life. Um, yeah. Uh, probably should have done something about it, uh, you know, maybe put a little effort into this. If not to go figure out what can come in and penetrate a battle group like that, but God, just what if we, what if we can harness that technology? So 14th of November 2004 should have been the day that changed history, but it didn't. Four pilots who were on a training exercise over the Pacific Ocean, just off the coast of the United States, were being buzzed and played by UFOs. In total, around about six pilots saw these UFOs zipping around their airspace at unbelievable speeds and even more unbelievable maneuvers. Far more advanced than anything our military has or even private engineering has. But this incident didn't start here on the 14th of November, it started two weeks earlier with reports from radar crew on various vessels that they were seeing these craft in the airspace above the training area in the Pacific Ocean, with as many as 25 craft being observed by the radar crew. We cannot find much about what the military did at this point. The best that we can get is that they were just observing these craft in the high skies of the Pacific. And two weeks later, the pilots had a visual encounter and also a near collision with one of these Tic Tac UFOs. They could see every detail on these craft, seeing how at the speeds and the manoeuvres that, that these craft were performing. These pilots and ship radar crew, plus the air control units and other ships in the convoy from the USS Nimitz and the Princeton, they saw what they saw. These men and women are the best of the best. 
Now a lot of people I speak to about this encounter and other encounters believe that the pilots and the ship crew and the police officers and the lawyers and the doctors and presidents are all a little bit mad, have, you know, hallucinations, uh, optical illusions, okay? That's a load of rubbish. It really, really is. <laughs> People tell me that Bob Lazar has been proved fake. Uh, for his accounts, but he but he never stepped foot anywhere near Area 51. But he must be a bit mad or insane to make this stuff up, right? What are these people scared of? Seriously, what are they scared of? I mean, just open open their minds just a tiny little bit. Yeah, the evidence is out there. There's far far more evidence to say that these things exist than not. Okay. Look at all the ancient texts, all the flipping ancient civilizations and, and their texts and their cave paintings and, uh, you know, the megalithic stonework and stuff that went on. But anyway, <laughs> um, now we have the Pentagon releasing the UFO footage as real UFO contact. Maybe it's time to rethink what everyone thinks, what an illusion is. Or, you know, people being a bit mad and crazy, which they're not. They're normal people, highly, highly trained, experienced aviators and, and people, to, you know, trained with their eyes to observe stuff, you know. Roswell, Area 51, the Dolts, Patterson Air Base, all said to have held craft or beings at one time or another. So these pilots and ship crew, the top guns of our planet, the best of our planet, can they all be wrong? No, they're not. This includes myself and other military personnel I've worked with, including British RAF pilots who have been stationed in some of the bases I've just listed. We know what military fighter planes and helicopters look sound like we know their maneuvers we know the capabilities of these crafts yeah when you see an aeroplane an f-15 or a stealth fighter in the sky you know what it is yeah it it's undeniable okay as a blinking light it has wings it has tail fins it has rudders you know it, it has an engine <laughs> you know you can see a vapor coming out of the back these UFOs, there's nothing, nothing like that whatsoever, okay? So you cannot get mixed up with a plane and these UFOs that are buzzing our airspace that are coming and, and doing what, whatever they want to do, okay? So, but why release all this information now in 2020? Especially when the world is in stranger times as it is with you know, with COVID and, and George Floyd protests and all the riots going on for more freedom and everything like that. Why did they do it? Why now? And why did nobody react the way they should have? It should have been the biggest news in human history of the world, in humanity. The biggest thing in the universe, but it wasn't. A couple of well, a couple of people, a few, I'd say, million people, people like myself and people like you guys that are watching. We heard it. We were like, wow, that's fantastic. We already know this. Thanks anyway. But it it doesn't make sense to me why, why they would do this now. Let's say that these craft, yeah, let's say that they're not extraterrestrial, that they're Russian or... Chinese or, or any other superpower countries, then surely with weapons and craft that advanced, yeah, they would surely be used to their advantage by ruling over less advanced countries. But this hasn't happened. Because like the government say, they are not from Earth. The government say that they have craft not made on this Earth. That can mean four things. Okay, the first one, 
Number one, Biz Craft Lab, the government's made on a super space station. These are my theories, okay? So a super space station is plausible. Yeah, we have space stations anyway. Yeah, a super space station, big enough to, to you know, dock a spacecraft on or, or whatever, or build a spacecraft from scratch up there, or put it together up in, in space, you know, that's a possibility. The second one, UFOs are man-made, but on the moon. Again, plausible. Number three, and the most plausible, I would say, the UFOs are made on another planet by ETs. And number four, something completely different involving other realities and dimensions. That's a little bit like number three, okay? But number three, you know, you, UFOs are made on other planets by ETs. That's still in our universe, still in our solar system. But if it's number four, something completely different in other realities, other dimensions, just like uh, the Skinwalker Ranch, what the, all the scientists and the investigators and military personnel that have witnessed, and uh, the general public in Utah, that have witnessed all these weird goings on for hundreds of years, from the uh, native Indians that lived there before. Yeah, so it's it's something to think about. Yeah, it's well we're all thinking about it, but I mean when I say it's something to think to think about, it it it's not Russia, it's not China, it's not flipping Australia or Britain with these craft. Yeah, um, don't get me wrong, a lot of the TR3Bs that have been seen. Um, I would say our military. So, for instance, the difference between a military T uh, so the difference between a military TR3B and a UFO TR3B, yeah, or an extraterrestrial TR3B, is that the military ones you can see the different panels where it's you know, been put together, for instance, yeah? Have a look at, uh, there's some footage that um, To The Stars Academy put up um, that Tom DeLong mentioned on the, a Joe Rogan podcast. And he says that, that uh, it, it, and it's filmed in uh, Night Vision, and he says that uh, that one is military. It's reverse engineered because it has the rudders on the top. And it also has, uh, you can see that the landing gear is out and things like that. And you can also see that it's not, as Bob Lazar states, it's all one, uh, one, one shell with no seams or no joins. But in these TR3Bs that are seen quite a lot, you can see that they have joins. They have, you know, um, like put together like jigsaw or, or not jigsaw. But you know what I mean, it, it's not as fluid as, as what Bob Lazar states and other eyewitness accounts that have seen these UFOs up close and personal. So, something big's coming, something big's happening, as we all know, because the world's just gone into absolute chaos at the moment, and no one's battered an eyelid that we have these UFOs coming from you know, out of space or from the heavens, from the skies, whatever you want to say. They are here, they are coming, they're zipping around our airspace and there's nothing that our military, our air forces can do about it whatsoever. So, after that guys, this is the end of the video. Um, I'm going to leave it here because I'm, I'm, I'll just end up ranting on for ages and ages and um, you guys probably don't want that <laughs> but uh, yeah we've all seen the footage of uh, of what I've just put on from the pilots and uh, the radar crew so let me know what you guys think about all this about uh, the UFOs where they come from if if they are man-made where would they be made and why hasn't 
you know, the country or the superpower made them, why haven't they used them to their advantage? You know, we've been seeing these things for, for millennia flying over our skies, flying over our heads. Always happened. It has always happened. So things are starting to get moving now by the governments and by uh, To The Stars Academy with Tom DeLong. Um, and again, that, that makes me wonder why he's involved. I really, really don't get that. It's great what he's doing, if it's all 100% true. You know, he's building a spacecraft with technology found from uh, a downed UFO. So, you know, it's, it's one to watch. So, yeah. Anyway, guys, if you like this video, please subscribe, press the like button, hit the notifications button so you don't ever miss a new video and I'll see you again soon. Thanks a lot guys. Take care. Thank you.